In this video, you will get to know 10 Gmail productivity tips that you absolutely need to know about. Flag important email. You might have noticed that messages have a star, so you can star these messages if you want to, which already might be good enough for your situation. But I want to show you a productivity tip to show how you could use this for your workflow. So I'm going to head over to the settings, see all settings. And if you scroll a bit down, you'll see the stars. Here you go. The stars currently, there's only the yellow star in use, but I want to do something different with this. What I want to do, I want to add, and let me do this like, so I want to add an exclamation mark and a done checkbox. I'm going to make sure to save this. And let's see what happens now. So on this email, when I click here, an exclamation mark is displayed. And this I suggest using for emails that somehow need your follow up, that need your attention in the future, like so. And once it's done, then you can go ahead and click. There you go. Click again. And now you see the green check mark or the, the checkbox, meaning that you've, I don't know, processed this message. Now, what you also can do with this. Now, if I hover over it, you see start with red bang. I can search for emails that have this red bang. The way you do it is the following. You say has, and now red bang enter. There you go. So this is a super useful productivity tip for whenever you want to mark certain messages as important and filter and see only exactly those messages. Use labels to track tasks. I'm going to show you how you could use labels to track tasks or specific steps in a process if you wanted to. So here we have our sales process. It's, it's compromised of different steps or tasks. Like, um, the step one would be offer was requested. And then I completed the task of sending out an offer. So we see it's a combination, but in any case, it's our sales process here in Gmail. I currently have a message here from Adam. Let's say he's requesting um, a quote or something. Hey, Adam, and using the smart suggestions, and then you just go ahead and send that out. And now you can label this as, um, what was it to, there you go. Offer sent, you apply that. And you might as well in this case, since we've brought this to the next step in our process, go ahead and um, take away that first label. And now if we click here on offer sent, we see that the message is here because that's the current step in our process. And you would find all of the different other messages that have gone through those steps, um, which tasks you have completed. So this is a way how you could use labels. Snooze emails. Let's say we received this message and I don't want this to be in my inbox right now because I can't process it now, but I want it to come back to my inbox when I'm ready to deal with this message. So I'll simply go ahead and right click on it and snooze it. And it says until when you want to snooze, maybe later, maybe later today, tomorrow, next week, or you can also go ahead and select a specific date and time. I'm just going to choose something random here. That looks good. And now you see it's gone. So it's not visible here in inbox. Instead, it's disappeared. Now, what happens if you want to get that message back? Maybe you need to, or you want to process it faster than what you thought, then just go ahead and click on more and then click on snoozed. And here you'll find all of the messages in our case, it's one that has been snoozed and we could easily go ahead now and answer this and unsnooze this if we wanted to, which would have the effect of just making it visible, visible again, under the label of inbox. And by the way, label inbox, not folder inbox. If you're wondering why I said that, why I'm talking about labels and not folders, then go ahead and check out the video that I'll be linking right about now. Archive your emails. I have a couple of old emails here. Let's say these couple of messages here, we want to archive them. So we just go ahead and select them. And then we click on the icon here, archive. As a matter of fact, you can do a lot of the things you see up here in the menu toolbar also by right clicking. So I can archive all of these messages. 
Now, if you've ever looked for a label called archive, then you probably weren't successful with that search. The reason is because everything that is archived is here in all mail. And that has, or that the reason why is the way labels work. Um, so if you watch my video about labels versus folder, you'll understand why you'll have to search for the messages you have archived in all mail. So they're here. Um, I can go and get them back if I want to. So I just go ahead and select some of these messages that have been archived. And I can simply click here on move to inbox. And if I go to inbox, you'll see there should reappear here somewhere. Yeah, thread it was definitely one message that I put back to archive. Now there is no auto archiving, sadly, but there is a way I can show you how. I'll link my video to the auto archiver that I can show you how you can, with a couple of easy lines of codes, um, put together yourself, which you could maybe have run, I don't know, every Sunday evening and archive your older emails. Use filters in combination with task specific email addresses. We're going to do the following. We're going to create a label called newsletter, create a filter that checks for any incoming newsletters and directly sends them to the label, skipping the inbox. So the first step is to say, let's create a new label, call it newsletter. And then we want to do the following. We want to say whenever a message comes to um, Jane example dot suppose dot IO, but we're going to do something little here. We're going to add a plus sign and then news. So whenever something comes to here, um, we can go ahead and expand this like so. So when everything, any, whenever anything is sent to this email address, we want to do the following, as I said, skip the inbox and apply the newsletter label. That means that, let me go ahead and create the filter, any incoming newsletters will be sent directly to that label. Now, the way you would apply this now, by the way, this is our Superis newsletter, where we send out a new tip of the week for Google Workspace. So every week, if you want those tips, go ahead and sign up. Um, Superis.io, oh my goodness, I'm writing this in the wrong field. That's your email. Your first name would be Jane and the second would be example. So you see here, just add your default email address with that task specific email address um, addition. So plus, and then whatever term you want to use in our case, it's news and then hit the subscribe button. And when then the next time you receive a newsletter that is sent to that email address, it will land directly in our newsletter label, which is where, which is right here. So anything incoming would be sent there. Um, go ahead and refresh that. Okay. It hasn't arrived yet. Um, but the verification message will be sent directly to newsletter. Change the inbox type to focus on important messages first. So commonly, emails just get displayed chronologically the way you see them here, but that might not be the best thing for your productivity. So how about you try out a different inbox type? Let's access the quick settings. And down here, you see, this is the default inbox type. You have important first, unread first, and start first available. So start would be anything that has a star, which you have applied unread first. Let's go ahead and try that out. Just whatever is unread is displayed at the top and then everything else or everything that has been read. And as soon as you read something, it's displayed down here. And we see this isn't working correctly in this case, usually works out pretty good, uh, but here it's not doing what it's supposed to. Let me just go ahead and refresh. Let's see. No, it's still being displayed here, um, which should not be the case, but from time to time can happen. But I want to show you a different way, a different inbox type in this case, important, because this is quite interesting. Actually, you see important has this kind of like arrow icon on it. And when I apply the inbox type, you see we have important and we have everything else. Now the question is, how does Gmail know what's important? 
Well, according to Google, they use a couple of different signals to see which messages are important, not in general, but specifically for you, for you, for your Google workspace or for your Gmail or Google user that you um, have logged into. Now, there is a way that you can alter that importance that you can tell the machine learning algorithm, Hey, this message is important. And that is by clicking on this icon and marking this as important. So what it'll typically do is if it sees you're sending messages, um, about, I don't know, let's say demo group, demo group is always contained in your messages. Then it will think, ah, oh, whatever contains demo group must be in important, or maybe you frequently message with a customer of yours. In that case, it would think, ah, oh, okay. So this, um, sender or this receiver of messages must be important, but you can always go ahead and modify this to your liking. And let's see if this works properly. Let's just go ahead and refresh this because yeah, there you go. So now this is also displayed under important. So that is a very interesting option for your productivity that you see your important messages first in Gmail. Mute irrelevant email conversations. You keep on getting email messages in a thread that is just no longer relevant for you. Well, how about you mute that? So let's see. Um, I don't know. We have here a message. Let's say this one here, um, from Chanel, let's just go ahead and right click on it and then click on mute. There it goes. So we will no longer be bothered by these new messages popping up in our inbox. Instead, we will receive these messages. We just won't see them under inbox. They will be under all mail. So if we have a look here, all mail, the message will be here, but wait a minute, maybe I have so many messages from Chanel, but I want to get back that one that I just muted because maybe all of a sudden I notice, Ooh, I need, I need some information from that email. So how about you do the following? This is a bonus tip, by the way, is mute it or is mute also works. There you go. That's the message. You see it's muted. As you can see from the label that has been applied. If I right click on, click on it, I can say unmute and there you go. It is unmuted and whatever new messages come in will pop up here will be visible for me. Create templates for frequent messages. If you find yourself sending out the same information time and time again, you have to do the following. So let's go ahead and access our settings and head over to the advanced tab because we need to first enable templates. This is especially true if you've never used them before. So let's go ahead and save those changes. So now templates are enabled, which means I can create my template. I'm just going to paste some information. I, wrote together before. So let's say we wanted my message to look like, so maybe opening hours, that will be the subject of our template. And then we go ahead and click here on the three dots templates and say, safe draft as template. Um, this is one, you know what? That's a bit opening hours too. That's a bit, um, confusing. That is a template I already had. So just to make sure this is a new template. So save as new template opening hours too. So you see it automatically just uses the subject line as the name to save the template and we're good to go. So let me just go ahead and um, close that. And let's say we wanted to create a new message. We wanted to compose a new message and use the template for the first time. So templates, opening hours too. That's what I just saved before. And there you go. You just write in your recipient. I don't know, Adam and send it out. And, ah, interesting fact, as you can see, the template contains the signature. Uh, I might not want that. So that might be a good idea that when you're saving the template, you do not have the signature active. You're not displaying it. Or in this case, um, I would have to just say, you know what, use no signature because the template also already has a signature. So that is something to keep in mind when you're creating your own templates. And now let's just go ahead and send that out. Schedule emails for future sending. So in this case, 
Jane told Adam that she would follow up at a specific time. Now, she doesn't want to forget the email, so she's already writing it, but she wants it to go out at, this, at a specific time, at the specified time, actually. So instead of just clicking on the Send button, go ahead and click on the More Send Options and then on Scheduled Send. So this might be, I don't know, tomorrow at 8 or maybe more likely on Monday at, uh, yeah, let's say at 1 right after lunch schedule the send and it will automatically be sent out. But wait a minute, maybe you have to change something on that email. Is it gone? Can you get it back? Have a look at scheduled. Ah, there's the email. Um, it's scheduled. Uh, in this case, if you want to work on it, you could say cancel send. And we're back now in the edit mode and we could say blah, 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 blah whatever we need to do, and then just go ahead and reschedule it. The last scheduled time was Monday at one. That's exactly the time we wanted to go out. So this has now been rescheduled and we'll go out at that specified time. Use keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts can be a huge boost to your productivity. Let's go ahead and enable them. So we click on the settings, see all settings, and then there's keyboard shortcuts, there you go. Currently off. Let's go ahead and enable them. Click on or navigate down to save changes. There you go. And now mm, how do I get an overview of these keyboard shortcuts? Just go ahead and type the question mark on your keyboard. There you go. So these are now all of the possible keyboard shortcuts we have. Quite a lot to memorize actually. I don't think I'll be able to do all of that. Um, so it's probably easiest to just memorize the couple few most frequently used. But in any case, if you need to have an overview of all of the keyboard shortcuts as said, just type the question mark on your keyboard and there you go. Let me know which is your favorite tip. Write it in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of the new video tutorials, productivity tips, and hacks that we share with you.